We want to now ask the question, what is the criteria for making uh, the electron flow in an electrochemical cell spontaneous in the direction that we've written it from anode to cathode? So as I said, uh, generally the electron flow, as the reactions are written, would go from anode to cathode. For our reaction that we've been using through this series, that would be this uh, cell diagram right here. Uh, tin being oxidized to tin sulfate ions and nickel sulfate ions being reduced to nickel. So we know that if a reaction is spontaneous, then our delta G of reaction is less than zero. And we know that for our electrons, electrons flow from high voltage to low voltage. <clears throat> so just like uh, particles flow from regions of high to low chemical potential, uh, electrons flow from regions of high to low electrical potential, and electrical potential is measured in volts, which is uh, joules per coulomb. So we can think of that uh, these must be connected in some way because it's spontaneous for electrons to go from high to low voltage. It's spontaneous for a reaction to go from high to low Gibbs energy. Okay, so if that's spontaneous, then... So if spontaneous electrons flow in the direction that we've indicated from left to right. All right, so we can indicate for our cathode and our anode here what the voltages are on each of those individual pieces. So let's say our anode here has some voltage, and let's, let's just say that there's some way that we could measure that voltage. So let's say we have a voltage on the left, which is where the anode is. And let's say we have some voltage on the right, where the cathode is. So what is the difference in potential that the electron feels that it, that it goes from the anode to the cathode? Well, that's just the final minus initial conditions so for our delta V that our electron feels, that's just going to be the voltage on the right minus the voltage on the left. <clears throat> and one thing to notice is that this does not mean the spatial arrangement of the, electrical the electrochemical cell. For example, you could arrange these two in a way such that the anode was physically on the right, but in terms of cell diagrams, the anode is always on the left. So don't get it confused that just because a picture would be drawn uh, in a manner that's not consistent with this diagram, this diagram is still always such that the anode is always on the left and the cathode is always on the right. So that's what we're indicating with the, the subscripts for left and right. Okay, so the quantity that we're going to define, which is going to be of interest to us for electromotive forces, or for electrochemical cells, is going to be this quantity called E. And as the video title suggests, that is the electromotive force. It's the force that makes, that puts the electrons in motion, as you can tell by the different parts of the word. Okay, so this electromotive force, how do we, how do we get at it? Well, the electromotive force is just defined as this change in potential evaluated when the current in the circuit is zero. So we've, a current is just electrons flowing from left to right or, le or right to left, whichever it is. But if there's some electron flow, then those electrons are generating a current, some amount of coulombs of charge over some unit of time. And the EMF, the electromotive force, is just measuring what that change of voltage is at, with no current going across it. So just kind of what's the standing potential 
between this anode and this cathode that this, that these electrons would feel should they move across and around the, the circuit. Okay, so we can measure we can measure this uh, much more easily if the cell is reversible. So that's why we're concerned about the criteria of reversibility for our uh, electrochemical cells. So if the cell is reversible, then what we can do is <clears throat> this will be true that the change in voltage as a function of current will approach the E, which is the EMF, electromotive force. It will approach the change in the voltage, the difference in voltage across this across our cell will approach the EMF as our current approaches zero. So obviously you have to have a tiny, tiny amount of current one way or the other in order to measure this, but we can just push a few electrons this way and a few electrons back and just make this current as small as possible in order to measure what this voltage is. And this voltage gives us the EMF as we measure it as it gets very, very close to zero. Okay, so our EMF, our electromotive force here, um, is going to be the criterion for spontaneity in these types of uh, electrochemical cells. So what we want to note here is that for our EMF, uh, E greater than zero <coughs> is going to be a spontaneous reaction. It's going to flow from left to right spontaneously. <coughs> e less than zero is not spontaneous. So that means that there's going to have to be some input of energy in order to get electrons to flow this direction because if the EMF is less than zero, then they want to spl spontaneously, they want to flow in the other direction. And similarly, as you can probably guess, E equals zero would mean that our delta G of reaction is zero. And that would mean that we are at equilibrium. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to try to connect how exactly we make a quantitative connection between delta G of reaction and the EMF and how these two gives us the exact criteria for spontaneity and exactly how far um, these, these individual reactions are going to go.